in science, essentially what you do is you, you can scope the territory, but then you have to generate hypotheses. In order to answer those hypotheses, you need to sample the populations you're interested in, take the measurements, compare them, and then draw your inferences. Um, so you need populations. You need representative populations, right, you, or representative samples of populations. So that the whole issue was, the first big issue was how to get brains of different size and shape into a standard space. And then there were, there were initial, sort of quite uh, uh, crude, but, but, but the pr pr preliminary attempts were, were done by Fox uh, in Rakel's lab, and then he went on and did some more stuff down in San Antonio on his own. He came over to us when we started to do all these strange new ways of warping brains and so on, and that whole thing took from about 88 through to about 94. Um, then there was the statistics. So the initial V5 paper that I did with Semir and uh, with, with others, Christian Luke and others, which which, we, which Carl was involved in, the statistics were quite simple statistics, and the thresholds were just just beginning to sort of get an idea of how one might have to go about that. And then over the it, it took up to 92, 91, 92, 93, 94 again. Carl working with with uh, Worsley in uh, in McGill. Um, who was a bona, a bona fide statistician, who really got that together. And then as soon as the thresholds and the warping was done, then it was simply a question of bringing, you know, from univariate to multivariate, bringing in all the different categorical, for going from categorical comparisons to, to parametric designs. And then the biggest jump, which was about 95, which was this whole notion of looking at nonlinear interactions between brain regions, going to the factorial designs and so on. So it was very much um, a strategy. It was a strategy that took a number of years, a number of key papers, which are now very highly cited, building this, this, this um, SPM framework. It's become a worldwide network. There are more than 3,000 labs using it. There's a helpline with, you know, thousands of, of questions and answers being answered by different people in the network worldwide. People produce new routines which are of use. They get incorporated. We've just had the SPM homecoming. We have an annual homecoming here where Carl gets his people together and they come from the whole world. Mm -hmm.